Thank you for checking out my video. Today I have a couple of DIY projects for you. First, I'm going to do a walkthrough on how to remove an over-the-range microwave oven. And then I'm going to do a walkthrough on how to install an under-cabinet range hood. With that, let's get started. So first steps in removing, you want to make an assessment of what you're dealing with. First, I would get a sense of the weight of this thing. It looks pretty heavy, so I might need a couple of people to help me out or another person to help me out. So here I noticed there's a bracket over here and then a bracket over here. And then what I would do is I would clear out the area just to make sure nothing is in the way while you're removing the microwave oven. I'm going to re remove this panel so I can see what's going on inside. Boom, I got it. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. Here's the duct that is going through the vent that will bring the smoke outside. And here I noticed some foil tape and there's foil tape at the bottom as well. It looks like I will need to make a trip to Home Depot to get the foil tape. You can see there's a screw here and a screw here as well. These two screws hold the microwave oven in place. For safety reason, I'm going to unplug this thing here. There we go. So I'm going to remove the tape here because it is, it is attached to it. And if I don't remove it, I'm not going to be able to pull the microwave out. So the tape are removed and I sort of wiggle it like that. So it looks like this will come off. What I'm doing is just providing some protective covering for the oven. So, see it looks like that, right? It'll give it some protection. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm measuring the height from the bottom of the microwave oven to the surface of this cardboard here. Uh, the height is about 15 and a half inches. So I'm going to go into my garage and find something solid about that height so I can use it to hold the microwave in place. So luckily, I found something with similar height. This is about 15 and a half. I'm going to see if it fits. There you go, it fits uh, perfectly, uh, but just a little bit uh, gap in between. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the gap with these things here. Fold it, just to make sure it's tight enough. It's really tight to hold this thing in place. Yep. Much better. So this is really tight. So when I unscrew the microwave oven from the top, it will sit right here and it's not going to fall onto the oven and break apart. Once you remove the screws, you should be able to remove the microwave oven. Like so. Okay. The screws off. So now what we're trying to do is try to pull this out, right? And I mentioned earlier there's two brackets behind there. So we're gonna try to pull it out and tilt it so this can come off the bracket and then eventually pull it out. Again, this is heavy. You probably need more than one person. So I'm asking my daughter to come and help me. She's been working out, yeah, she's been getting muscle. All right, so first I'm gonna pull this out so it'll give it a little way for it to tilt. And then pull down, let go down, boom. So it's come down and it's resting on top of here. And the bracket's up here. So, yeah. I'm going to see if I can. Okay, just let it rest on there. So it's tilting a little bit more. So, yeah. So the idea is to, uh, to have it tilt, oh. tilt it down and then uh, eventually bring it out. So this is a little bit too high at this point. We're gonna have to figure out how to bring it down a little bit more. We found a stool and a book. It just it gives it enough gap for it to come down so we can push it up. I'm going to continue to push it up while my daughter pulls out the uh, okay. and then we'll replace it like that. 
like so. All right, I think it's good. Okay, so we're just gonna let it down. Let it down. Oh, there we go. The top is coming off nicely. Next step is to pull the microwave out. Right. So now it's leaning down a little bit. So we're gonna try it. Yeah, this thing is really heavy. So I recommend having two people doing this. Ready? I'm going to push it up and then we're going to pull it out on this side first. Okay. Is it free? Yeah, it's free now. Right? Is that free? Yep. Okay, so this side is free. I'm going to go the other side and do the same thing. One, two, three. Okay. I think oh, it's off, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it comes off the bracket. And now as you can see, this thing is holding in place. What? Yeah, there we go. Cool. And then, uh, touch your finger. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Fingers good. Yeah. Your fingers good? Yep. Yeah. Fingers good. Okay. All right. Perfect. See, that's the bracket that we're talking about. It's like a J bracket together. So that's why you need to lift it up, bring it out, and pull it out of the way. That is the event there. So as you can see the tape here, I'm going to have to run to Home Depot and get a tape. It is a rectangular vent, so I have to make sure that my range hood also have a rectangular vent as well. Good job, daughter. Thank you. Thanks, father. There we go. I'm going to just pull it out like that. Beautiful. The wall's kind of uh, sticky and dirty, so here's a good opportunity to wipe off all the grease that's been accumulating all these years as well as clean up the cabinet area as well before the uh, installation of the range hood here's my new range hood I am going to open it up see what it looks like this range hood comes with multiple possibilities looks like this one fits well here and it will be a perfect match for my current situation so I'm going to use this one I will take this off and put this one in I'm going to use my best friend to take this guy off okay so this should come off like so Wow, perfect. I'm going to use this one here, like so, perfectly, right? Before I screw this in, I want to take a look what's at the bottom. So I'm not going to put this in yet. Turn this around, put it over. We'll take the filter or plates out of the way and then push it in and pull it out like that. This is what it looks like in the front. This range hood has uh, two electric motors as you can see so it's going to give me some very powerful suctions and this range hood has triple the capacity of uh, suction power than the, the one I currently have so it's going to be really good for my cooking needs so it looks like in order for me to install this range hood and screw it into the cabinet I have to remove these panels here so I can access the top part and uh, find a nice place for it somewhere. Let's take a look inside. So now we have access to the inside. As you can see here, there's a hole there for the screw. And there's another one right there. You can't see it. And yeah, here as well, right there. Look how powerful this fan is. I can't wait. So here are the areas where I need to screw the cabinet in. So pretty simple to do. What I'm going to do now is screw the vent onto this place here. From there, we can try to install it. Okay, so we're done. Nice and tight. Don't forget to open the vent here. 
I did, I so. I found a box of um, 5W30 oil that I'm going to use the base. And I also am going to reuse this ice box here. Okay. This thing actually comes really handy for this project. So I measured uh, from the top to the bottom here. It gives me around 8 inches. So there's plenty of room for me to insert the range hood here and uh, to do the installation. So to give more capability, I'm going to take this little thing out on the wall like that. And leave it there like that. Once we hook this up, then we can reconnect this whole thing. Again, so what we did was we disconnected the ducts there to give us more flexibility because you can always insert the duct later on onto this top of the vent here. There we go. Okay. Okay. Cool. What we need to do now is going to try to make sure this is aligned well and then uh, probably insert a couple more items to bring it all the way up and from there we can screw it in. The four screw holes are here so you want to leave this room open so you can go underneath and put in a screw. For the screw part you need to get an extension right so I got a long one here so I can reach from the bottom to the top part. So now we're going to put in the docks back and see if we can uh, connect the, the range. This here fits in perfectly, so now I'm going to maneuver the top part. Oh man. Alright, I did it. Okay. So I managed to maneuver the docks to make it fit. So by removing the fall tapes, it gives it a flexibility for you to extend it or shorten it by push these different parts in and out together. So now it's nice and snug. And all I have to do now is put fall tape over it. So now as you can see, we have the fall tape all around, taped beautifully. And there as well, there is no leak coming through. Plug this thing up. There we go. Okay, so we're done here. Together. Okay. We completed placing the uh, fan panel. So now we're going to put the filter on. Push it in place. Boom. Uh, there we go. Beautiful. So that looks really nice. Beautiful. I turn on the lights here. Turn it on. It's a touch screen. You got bright lights coming through. Then it has six levels. Pretty easy to do. That's starting at level number six. Very powerful. And then you can reduce the level, as you can see, to a lighter level. And it's not that noisy, actually, given that there's two fans, two motors. So, not bad. Raise it up a little bit. Yep. Should be able to capture all the smoke and bring it outside instead of the smoke staying inside the house and make the house smell. So here's the, the result of the installation today. I'm glad it turned out okay and I think I'm going to be really happy using this range hood. It's going to help me capture all the smoke 
all the spices, all the aroma, and keep it out of the house. So, with that, thank you for uh, watching the video. I hope you find it uh, helpful. If you think the video is to somebody else, please feel free to share the video. So again, thank you, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.